Well, good morning, St. Francis, and uh, happy Palm Sunday. It's great to have you back with us this morning. Uh, El Paso, especially here on the west side, often reminds me of Jerusalem. Uh, Jerusalem and El Paso are both cities at cultural crossroads. They're both cities tucked up in uh, beautiful rocky mountains. They're both cities that are surrounded by wilderness. And uh, Jerusalem has Galilee close by. I guess our Galilee would probably be uh, Cloudcroft. <laughs> so, uh, so both cities are very similar. So I can imagine uh, that very first Palm Sunday being like this uh, in Jerusalem, a beautiful spring morning. And as Jesus approached Jerusalem, he was riding on a donkey. And, you know, for the Hebrew people, their kings had often entered Jerusalem on donkeys. Uh, Solomon and David had. So here comes Jesus, son of David. They knew what he had been doing. He was riding on a donkey and they, they welcome him as a coming king. They get out their palm fronds and uh, they start waving their palm fronds. Uh, the palm frond was the national symbol of Israel. So the whole scene was very nationalistic and uh, they think Jesus is going to be the guy who's going to come in and kick out the Romans and establish uh, the rule, uh, the Jewish rule over Israel. So uh, a very, a very similar morning probably to what we're experiencing this morning here in El Paso. Well, on this Palm Sunday, we're going to continue our series looking at the Lord's Prayer. And we're on this phrase uh, that we find in the prayer, the request, lead us not into temptation. And you might be thinking, uh, well, God doesn't lead us into temptation. How is that possible? And uh, James uh, agrees with us. He would, James writes this in chapter one. He says, let no one say, when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God can't be tempted with evil, and he tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desires. So what's going on here in this prayer when we pray, lead us not into temptation? Uh, what does Jesus mean? Well, the Greek word here that's translated temptation is the Greek word peramon. And peramon, it actually has two different meanings. One meaning is a test or a trial. The second meaning uh, is temptation. Here in Luke chapter 11, Jesus is referring to a coming trial. Uh, so the, the, the probably the best translation of this would be, uh, don't let us face the great trial. And I think Bishop N.T. Wright is correct when he says, that the immediate context for this request in chapter 11 of Luke's gospel is actually found in chapter 22. Chapter 22, we see Peter, James, and John, they go with Jesus to the Garden of Gethsemane. And uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, Jesus says this to his disciples. He says, watch and pray that you may not enter into Peiraman, all right? That you may not enter into the great trial. Jesus knew uh, that this great trial was upon him. All of the, the powers of darkness and the purposes of God were all converging on him at the cross. And he knew his disciples couldn't hold up under the pressure of this great trial. He was the only one who could, could enter into this trial. Jesus continues uh, and he prays to his father. He says, Father, if it's your will, remove this cup from me. Father, if it's your will, take this great trial from me, but not my will, but yours be done. So the immediate context for this prayer that we find in Luke chapter 11 is fulfilled in the great trial of the cross. But then the context for all Christians, it broadens out for us. And we've seen, as we've looked at the Lord's Prayer, what we are not by nature, children of God, uh, we become by grace through faith in Jesus. So before we come to faith in Jesus, the Bible says that we are enemies of God. Paul describes this transition uh, in this way in Colossians. He says, God has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us over into the kingdom of his beloved son. When we come into the kingdom, we, we have a new identity, a new family. Uh, we are uh, under a new reign and a new rule in a new kingdom. So when we come to trust in Jesus, what we find is that sin no longer reigns over us. We have a, a new reigning king over us. So sin no longer reigns, but sin remains. 
And the same grace that reconciles us to God actually makes us enemies of Satan. Since sin remains, since we are enemies of Satan by grace, as it were, theologians talk about uh, the battleground that we all experience. And uh, the battleground comes in three different areas. We experience battle in the world. Uh, the world is everything out there that says, uh, this is beautiful, this is good, this is necessary for you to be happy. We also experience a battleground in our hearts, in the flesh. Uh, everything inside of us that says, I need this in order to be happy, to be fulfilled, to be content. And then we battle uh, against the devil. Uh, Satan comes in and he exploits everything out there, everything in here, to entice us and draw us away from God. So we battle against the world, the flesh, and the devil. That's why even as followers of Jesus, we struggle uh, and we tell lies, cheat, steal, grow envious. Uh, we grow proud, self-centered. Even as followers of Jesus, we're intrigued by immorality. We enjoy slander. That's why uh, it's so easy to build ourselves up and tear other people down rather than building other people up and tearing ourselves down. Sin no longer reigns, but sin remains. Because when Adam sinned, he took us all down with him. There's no period of a Christian's life, your life or mine, that we're free from the struggle with trials and temptation. We will always face them. But there's an important distinction that we need to understand uh, between a trial and a temptation. And we see it, I think, uh, very clearly in the life of Abraham. God said to Abraham, you know, he came to Abraham and, and Sarah, and he told them, he said, you know, I'm gonna give you a son. And remember, Sarah laughed uh, at this promise because they were so old. He said, you're gonna have a son, but uh, you're also gonna have a trial because the trial is that you're gonna have to wait for this son. So what happened? Well, Satan comes alongside Abraham, and uh, Satan says to Abraham, uh, you know, I'm gonna turn this trial into a temptation and he tempts Abraham and Abraham listens to his wife uh, he refuses to listen to God he refuses to listen to his conscience he takes matters into his own hands and he fathers a child through Hagar and all the chaos and sadness and disaster and brokenness uh, it all results from Abraham succumbing to temptation and taking things into his own hands. Because in the midst of a trial, Abraham surrendered to a temptation. The Bible says sin is crouching at our door. It desires to have us, but we must master it. I think for some of us, we think that uh, as Christians, you know, we can just sort of uh, lay back, you know, put our feet up on the beach and, and uh, Sit, let Jesus do everything. You know, we say, well, I prayed that I'm going to be delivered from temptation. And, you know, that's done. Uh, that's over. Jesus has taken care of it. Well, it's not over for us. We continue to battle against the world of flesh and the devil. Our conduct has to correspond to this prayer. When we pray, lead us not into temptation, it means that I, I'm going to, not going to put myself carelessly, recklessly, willfully into a situation where the world, the flesh, and the devil are going to overwhelm me. Here at the beginning of Holy Week uh, with uh, Mount Cristo Rey here in the background, it's so important that we remember and remind ourselves that Jesus went to the cross. He faced this great trial and he drank the cup completely and overcame the enemy of our souls. He overcame evil, he overcame the grave. Our prayers uh, for protection, for deliverance from evil must always, must always bring us back to the foot of the cross. For the cross where, where Jesus uh, overcame, where Jesus was triumphant. He did what we can never do. And the strength that we have to overcome is found only in Jesus and what he accomplished for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, your faithfulness to seek us out when we were lost and dead 
and hopeless in our sins. And Lord, you've overcame the world, the flesh, and the devil through uh, the gift of your son, Jesus, and his faithful sacrifice on the cross. Lord, I pray that this Holy Week, we would uh, trust what you have accomplished for us and that we would uh, understand the freedom that we have as we stand in our new identity, in this new family, members of this new kingdom. By grace, through faith in your son, Jesus. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. Pray that you have a blessed Palm Sunday and uh, a holy and meaningful week as we prepare to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Goodbye. See you soon.